good afternoon everyone and welcome to the panel discussion my name is sayantan i am a queer trans science writer communicator and journalist i work as a faculty teaching associate at kriya university andhra pradesh where i teach writing and oral communication um, and i'm also a part of the feminist multimedia science collective thelifeofscience.com i welcome you to the panel discussion titled queers who stem and i'm extremely glad and honored to introduce our two panelists Subdeep Singh and Lakshmi Amrita Kalada. Uh, Subdeep Singh is the founder and editor in chief of Galaxy Magazine. He has also directed Sab Rabde Bande, a documentary on the topic of Sikhism and homosexuality. He is an engineering graduate from IIT ISM Dhanbad and has been working as a software professional for eleven years. Amrita Kalada has an experience in building and managing digital products. She has enjoyed working in various industries throughout her career in pharmaceuticals, healthcare, and management consulting, and has also worked as an entrepreneur in residence at Babson College. Currently, she is pursuing a Master of Science in Engineering and Management (IDM) at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology (MIT), where she studies product design, engineering management, and human-centered design process. and works as a research assistant at MIT's education lab previously she has completed mba in global business management and bachelor's in electronics engineering she is also proactively involved in representing women at MIT in leadership positions at graduate women at MIT which is called GWA MIT and sloan pride at sloan school of management mit so a big hearty welcome to both subdeep and ambita for joining us today and i think without wasting any time because we are all very curious to hear from our panelists i'll like to move on to the first question and i'd like amrita to start or uh, start the discussion off so the question to both of you uh, at the moment is as queer individuals how was your experience pursuing your stem education and stem career and i'd invite amrita to start sharing her views first and then i'd uh, reach out to sudhi Thank you. Thanks a lot. Definitely. Um, thank you for the introduction, Sanjan. And um, I would like to start with saying that before I started my graduate uh, graduate degree at MIT, I went to a really like small engineering school in Andhra, in India. And uh, as you know, like um, the smaller schools are located in uh, not bigger cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Chennai, but they're located in dear two cities like. Vishakhapatnam, Kakinada, or like smaller cities in other states, and uh, as that comes with uh, prejudice, because people have not been around other queers or like people from queer com- communities, right? So even the educators and my peers uh, during this engineering study in my undergrad uh, were really prejudiced, uh, prejudiced because they were not aware of anyone else from the community and they have not been educated on it. so that is how my experience has been during that time and uh, even through that i still did manage to like find some support through few peers who were like really open to educating themselves and um, after that when i moved here there was a really big shift in the environment that i was uh, being part of which is in united states i did my mba at babson college for 2 years and now at mit i've been here for a year now and uh, as you can see that even in news and everywhere that us is very more uh, way more accepting than other countries for like queers and everyone else uh, minority communities here special play, uh, places have been created such as like rainbow lounge at mit where like any queer person or it is open to anyone who can come and feel safe and uh, also the educators are more welcoming because everywhere they're trained they're trained in like how not to discriminate and uh, how to be more welcoming and inclusive so that's how i had two different experiences thank you thanks a lot amrita for sharing i think what we take away from what you've said essentially is the need for our allies and people around us to be more and more accepting of not just our existence but of the fact that there are certain things that they don't understand and they really need to take the first step towards unlearning what they have learned uh, all about social biases and move towards educating and learning themselves so thank you for sharing that opinion and your experiences really appreciate it subdeep may i request you to uh, share your experiences yeah hi uh, hi and thanks so much for having me 
so my experience i would say uh, so i graduated in 2010 and i was in uh, ism between 2006 to 2010 and compared to like uh, 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 the last decade uh, the in general the environment everywhere in india was not so inclusive i mean experiences in tier 1 colleges were so different uh, either because uh, first of all it was a very different time when i graduated secondly uh, many of the uh, what i faced in uh, during my college days was that mostly people especially those who come to iits and uh, so they have like focused all their energies in the past like couple of years or at least to last two years uh, important uh, between t- uh, 11 in while well, they were in class 11 and 12 in just focusing on one thing that is science and they have missed out on real uh, i mean social skills they have missed out uh, they are like very bad at social skills they are really bad at any of the social sciences or in general how how one should uh, or any of these uh, social issues for that matter because um, i think this is also a discussion i've heard many times where like we are churning out just robots because we are good at i mean people coming to these tier one colleges are basically good at science good at maths but they are not good at social skills or even for that matter social issues uh, add to that that uh, the environment in these colleges uh, uh, is very skewed in terms of gender ratio so we had very very few like uh, we had a batch strength of i think 400 something and uh, only 46 or 45 girls so as it is the gender ratio was very skewed and uh, the environment there was very very hyper masculine it was very much a uh, inter- uh, patriarchal i must say and, and uh, in that and that kind of an environment once you if you're gay you really don't uh, feel like uh, leave about coming out even discussing your sexuality because you see girls uh, being treated so badly and then you think like what will happen to you and so so the uh, all these young boys come there with uh, and and in fact like many of these taiwan colleges uh, they have uh, it's not like restricted to just one uh people from one <coughs> state or city so you have people coming from different parts of the uh, country from various remote villages in fact and so uh, so so the kind of uh, and i was from kerala which was uh, in fact more open minded so in general it it's a, it was a cultural shock for me uh, because uh, of the way people wear around me in general on different issues of whether it's gender or uh, other things on top of that being gay it just made me even more closeted and i did not come uh, come out uh, until i was in my final year and that coming out was also like a little forced i would say and so yeah so that has been my experience in uh, in uh, studying in a tier one college uh, these days uh, i see uh, after i graduated and these days now there are so many uh, or rather some of the colleges have started to have these uh, groups uh, student groups for lgbtq uh, students so support groups like iit sathi had uh, uh, iit bombay had, has sathi there are similar groups in roorkee and uh, or, or and in fact in iit delhi i was here i, uh, I was part of like, uh, like they took out a march in support of lgbtq uh, students uh, during their fest and uh, i participated in that so you have these events coming out in uh, in some different colleges these days uh, that wasn't the case when i was there and in fact uh, even now uh, i am not aware of any such support group in my college ids but it's been like 11 years uh, since i passed out so that's a long uh, so yeah things some of the colleges they are changing but uh, i'm not now in those colleges to say how much things have changed uh, but my experience was yes, uh, very uh, very trouble sir thank you thanks a lot subdeep again if i may take a minute to sort of put together the two experiences that we just heard so one thing that really stands out is that it doesn't matter if you are in a tier 1 or a tier 2 or a tier 3 college but there's a high possibility that if you're queer then you're going to face some kind of discrimination and that really really makes queer people like us marginalized in stem institutions and this is particularly interesting because stem institutions are also these institutions which have for a very long time um harped on this notion of objectivity they've said that as long as you're good in doing stem it doesn't matter everybody is welcome to do stem so when you actually open your eyes and go out to these universities and institutions and um really evaluate them for whether this is true or not you see that that's not true there are 
certain marginalized identities and people who come from those marginalized identities seem to be going through some or the other kind of discrimination but what i also take away from both your experiences is that a very crucial thing to changing that is the fact that uh, awareness building happens and collectivization of queer people on campuses happens so that really brings me to my next question which is again to both of you and this time i'd like subdeep to start us off which is how do you think queer um, and trans people specifically the lgbtqia plus people um, in stem spaces particularly institutions which are more focused on stem so if i say iits iiscs uh, iisc isers and such tifrs how do you think uh, subdeep can queer trans people collectivize in these institutions yeah hi uh, so i think uh, these days uh, a lot of things have changed there are a lot of on i mean support groups need not be a, a physical support group even online support groups can uh, help people so like for iits i know there is a group called pravrati uh, it's a facebook group they were also part of the uh, 377k they uh, and petition the code as well so there are online groups even if uh, like you are from a college uh, where there are no uh, offline groups or campus support groups at least be part of such uh, online groups and these can help you in a long way because you really find support and sometimes it also happens you you can find people who are from your college uh, in fact and you can develop friendships and so i think uh, support groups are important uh, you can uh, if you are in a position to take an initiative you can take an initiative yourself you can start conversation you, you need not to come out even for many of these things to do because uh, uh even uh, most of these colleges uh, iits and other engineering colleges do have uh, various groups hobby groups or show, uh, or student groups which organize different uh, different kind of uh, events on campus and so uh, and the environment in general in india today is a more uh, tending towards lgbt q inclusiveness or openness at least so you can start conversations through these events uh, as well if you have a support group it's very very good you should join that if you don't have a support group you can join online groups like probably or you may start one of your own uh, i remember when i was in college uh, it was uh, the time of all good and there were a few like uh, groups on all all good had like these online forums which were specific to our college i i don't know who made them but i did find find them and i did find uh, one or two i chatted with one or two people who were probably from my college as well uh, obviously uh, we didn't have the courage to meet up back then but yeah so even these groups uh, such online groups communities can go a long way uh, if there are offline groups campus groups i think that is well enough otherwise even in in your in general different uh, hobby groups or uh, societies that that are there which organize different events you can try and incorporate or try and talk to groups uh, to incorporate lgbtq uh, issues or uh, include lgbtq topics and i think that will go a long way in uh, uh, in, uh, in making the environment more lgbtq friendly yeah. thank you thanks subdeep amrita may i request you to share your thoughts as well um thank you and um, i would like to add to like subdeep's view about online communities is that i think now that there's a lot of people who are on internet i think it's much more easier to connect compared to like a decade ago where people weren't uh, present on the online um, communities and all that so i think that really helped a lot of people to find communities even though uh, they are not in the physically meeting in real life and it still gives them much support they needed um and i would like to also add that so as i stated in my first answer where like uh, rainbow launch is space safe space for like people from lgbtq communities to meet and uh, on the topic of uh, awareness educating them so i think it's not just about um lgbtq education it's also about like whenever someone who enters a stem education institute or any institute i think starting the education with like um putting standards for like 
educating the students on what is sexual assault or like what is discrimination, what is LGBTQ discrimination or all of that. I think a student needs to be educated in these before they're entering the institution, like a sensitivity training, which people take once they graduate and join a job, right? So everyone takes sensitivity training in like IT industry, software, or like any managerial positions. So starting that with st from the STEM education would help create the safe space all around the institute instead of like each person going and educating another person out of the community. And um, I also think that people around you in these educational institutions feel the need to like treat you as a Google. So in many, uh, many of my experiences, other people outside the community thought I was the encyclopedia or like Wikipedia on everything about queer or LGBTQ. And I did not mind that in the beginning, but I also think that now if the information is available online, I think people who want to educate themselves can do it right now and no, don't need to come to you for every question and every answer. So starting with education and creating awareness around LGBTQ communities and other minorities will be helpful. And another place to show uh, their support and inclusivity is to have simple things such as like every door of every faculty, if it had a sticker that said, you're welcome here and we are inclusive, you would feel more confident about going and talking to that professor or reaching out. You do, uh, students won't be making assumptions about them or their hatred towards the community. Simple gestures, uh, just as like a sticker on the door would say that this is a safe space. So these small steps could be really helpful. And one day, hopefully, I want to see uh, Indian institutions having a space where they could meet up and be safe and discuss issues of the community in these institutions. And uh, another place I would love to see inclusivity of the community is in the education itself, like the STEM education itself, where, um, we talk about Alan Turing, uh, one of the pioneer uh, computer science scientists in the world who has uh, helped in World War II and all that. So we need his inclusivity of queer scientists in our education, in STEM education. So I think that also helps build that respect among people outside the community that queer people have contributed to this. So I think those are the few spaces where you can create this um, awareness. Right. No. Thank you so much to both of you. Many interesting points emerge <clears throat> from this particular discussion alone, uh, because what I first and foremost, something that jumps out from both of your responses is how empowering it can be at times for technological advancement, right? So you, you see that as the online space and the access to online spaces grow, you have, um, you know, spaces opening up for queer people on campuses to really meet up and speak to each other, connect with each other, collectivize without exposing themselves to the dangers of a physical space, which is a great start really. And then we also come to the fact that allies have to take the ownership of really uh, educating themselves and they cannot depend on queer people who are not only marginalized already in these institutions, but are now going to have to do added labor in educating the allies. That's really interesting because very recently the Madras High Court has given a judgment uh, any homophobic, transphobic content and if the, um, and no textbook can get validated as a valid medical textbook if there is homophobic, transphobic content, which I think is a great move for a very long time. Some of us queer people who are in um, this particular biology spaces, right? So, I mean, I did my degree in biology and then I moved on to do neuroscience. Um, and oftentimes, in bio, especially while studying biology or medicine, there's a high tendency of pathologization of our bodies and pathologization of our sexualities and genders. So I'm glad that that move is happening. So to really sum it up, what you're saying uh, is that a collectivization can happen. So technology can actually be looked at as an enabling tool for collectivization. And another thing that can really help us improve the situation is having more queer people in decision-making bodies. So, um, and Amrita, what you're also pointing out towards is uh, so when you say that a faculty can have a simple sticker, which allows students to feel that that space is safe. If I may extend on that point, I think um, it would also be great if we have more and more queer role models in STEM. So we know that here's somebody who did, like Alan Turing, right? So here's somebody who did some great science and here's this person who's also queer, right? Otherwise, the absence of such role models is probably a constant reminder that if you're queer, so where are the queer people in STEM? Right? 
somebody might come to a conclusion that being queer and being somebody in stem are not compatible with each other so i'm glad that both of you are already giving us the space to have role models such as yourself and hopefully we'll have more and more queer people who have the space to assert their queerness in stem spaces so thank you um, if i now may move to um, you know from drawing from your points i'm really curious to understand what are your thoughts as both uh, people who are doing technology per se so um, other than creating online spaces as safe spaces safer spaces than physical spaces how do you think technology can empower queer people who are pursuing stem um, you're free to also address the question um, if you don't want to address it particularly in the stem context and i'm also happy to understand it learn more about how do you think technology helping queer people in general i um i request amrita to uh, share her views with us first and then i'll come to you sudeep thanks definitely um so i would start with saying that educating yourself i know i always go back to educating uh, is because that's where i started my personal journey to uh, now that all the information is much easily accessible so it gets easier on educating yourself about your sexuality about your identity so that is one aspect where technology is helping a lot of queer people in the community and um, another place where technology comes in handy as uh, sukti pointed it out is that building your community finding your community and people who can support you and be there for you so that is one space where technology has really helped like so deep also pointed facebook groups and all that and um, another space where i see technology being really useful for the community is uh, developing the professional relationships and also developing friendships those two spaces and uh, when we look at like finding community we always look at fi- uh, finding the community in the point of view of finding a support system a friendship i also want to say that there are a lot of queer people around the world who are willing to help other queer people in like professional careers and that is where uh, technology has like really helped you go on linkedin you can find people from your community who can connect with you with job opportunities and other professional careers so i think that's where technology has been really helpful in recent times is because you know that if that person feels comfortable in certain company in a certain role you know that that company is a little bit of safer space than the outside world for you to uh, start your career there so i would say that that's where the technology has been helping queer people and um, that's where i have seen in my personal life too so yeah thank you thanks a lot amrita sugdeep may i request you to share your points yeah i think amrita has mostly said what i wanted to say and apart from that uh, yeah i think the greatest contribution uh, i mean with technology has been that a we have information which is now readily accessible so we'll say 10 years uh, or 15 years ago i wouldn't have known what gay meant or or in fact uh, even to understand my own sexuality it would uh, it took me a lot of uh, like being part of some of the forums uh, doing uh, google search and all and uh, things weren't that accessible because we had a very shitty uh, internet uh, not everyone had access to internet now all these barriers were there today with all the technological advancements everyone has a, a smartphone go, uh, go, uh, we have not just google facebook various other reddit various other forums and in fact not just these forums but even many of the social media platforms whether it is instagram whether it is tiktok or any other social media platforms where they are uh, uh, and uh, which are not just a uh, source of information uh, up like apart from google but uh, are also uh, also help normalized lgbtq uh, people and lgbtq issues so i know tiktok and uh, instagram can be great forums where you can find even while you are young and closeted you can find many people uh, who are out and uh, who will basically give you hope so so all these technological advancements that have happened uh, i think they just add up to how uh, I, i mean it's up to us to use them obviously so but i think uh, there are avenues these days uh, which and technology has definitely benefited a lot uh, with how comfortable i see young uh, young kids today are uh, with their sexuality yeah i'm glad i'm really glad to hear both of you saying this because um for somebody who has been very critical of how science and technology um has looked at uh, 
bodies of queer people and queer people themselves it's really and i like this optimism and i'm really happy that to be a part of this panel for that reason um and i think as we talk about uh, technology and we're we're thinking more about online spaces and i think during the pandemic that's quite interesting because a lot of us who had physical spaces to connect with other queer people so for example prides in most places didn't occur last year right and for me at least uh, the hyderabad queer swabhimana yatra was a was a, as we call it so that's uh, the march that we have in hyderabad and it was one of those very important places where i meet my trans friends and my queer allies after a you know sometimes after a year so maybe the only time that i'm meeting them when i'm sharing my experiences and having a laugh and having some chai is that time and that's lost um, to the pandemic unfortunately but mm, the online space has sort of still kept us running and continuing so thanks for sharing that i'd like to not change gears a little bit and come towards more solutions really of how do we you know make stem spaces more accessible as well as hospitable for queer people so um and i would like to take this question in two um parts one one part being more about the institution level changes right where what can individual institutions do uh, but the second part of the question would be more at the level of policy uh, which applies to more than one institutions so, so maybe we can first take the question of institutions and because both of you come from very different institutions or at least have a background of, of very different institutions so so deep comes from a tier 1 institution and amrita you had an experience of both being in a tier 2 tier 3 institution but also being at mit uh, which is one of the world's best institutions really so hospitable I think as a tier two institution, I would start with sensitivity training for everyone involved uh, in like decision making in the organization and also every student before they start their education. That being part of their uh, STEM education, so I would start there with like training them, creating the awareness and all that. And uh, after that, the institution could create like. uh fund a place where queer people could meet like you know student clubs have like separate rooms activities and all that so that that way like queer people can have the safe space inside the institution to meet among themselves and uh, the also one of the important factors to this is that capital needed to organize these events if the institution could fund these events so that we could bring in allies to educate them and also have fun activities it's not always about education it's also about seeing queer people as um, normal human beings doing the same things that they do enjoy the same things that they do it doesn't need to be so special so those are the two things that uh, tier 2 institutions could do and um, my experience with mit is like completely different to the my experience in india in, in my undergrad so at mit people are already coming from different countries and institutions where they had experience with working with queer people where they had all already gone through sensitivity training as part of the education and all of that but even though i'm not saying the space is completely perfect because no space uh, made up of human beings will not be uh, without biases so even here there are more things you can do uh, already we have a safe space to meet which is rainbow lounge already the clubs are funded with money so that they can organize events and activities for both queer people and allies and all of that so another place where they could help students is like helping them with their careers mostly what happens with queer people is that they do not find that um, support system where like if a straight person goes to up another goes to another straight person and they could easily form that friendship without thinking about their identity and uh, move forward in career with like references and everything so that is one place where the institutions can help queer people so that we have role models more role mod role models in different industries so those are the few things that i would think would help in particular institutions thank you thanks amrita subdeep so over to you yeah Hi. so first of all i don't think uh, there is a difference between tier 1 and tier 2 when it comes to implementing uh, any of these uh, things i think uh, the situation in uh, colleges across india is 
very bad and so it's uh, uh, there's nothing specific to tier 1 which uh, uh, which tier 2 cannot implement or tier 2 which tier 1 should not implement nothing like that i think in general our colleges uh, need uh, s- uh, some of the things that amrita um, uh, pointed out so those are important uh, to add to those i would say some of these uh, as i mentioned uh, like uh, uh, some of the iits already have uh, these uh, student groups or uh, for for lgbtq support groups rather and uh, so what uh, what i think should also happen is that we do have uh, uh, when, uh, when a fresh batch comes there's a orientation program where the colleges college generally introduces the various things that are there in the college the administration introduces students to everything uh, it's a one or two day program uh, where students are made accustomed to different things that that happen in college including various uh, student societies uh so what uh, what colleges can do or institutions can do is if they have a uh, lgbtq support group in uh, in their college they should also uh, as part of this orientation program uh, as part of introduction of different uh, societies or groups that exist in the in, uh, in the college student groups that exist they should also include these uh, lgbtq support groups i think that will go a long day in at least Uh, that also gives out a message to to all these young uh, students who are coming to college that uh, the college cares for lgbtq students and that their space because i know uh, once you're entering these colleges you are like hardly 17 or 18 maybe and so so you uh, and you are still getting to know your own sexuality your own self and but, uh, when you enter a college and if you're in the orientation program you do get to know that there's such and such support group that exist in college you can go there even if you are questioning if even you are uh, you are unsure about your sexuality then uh, go and find support over there so i think that is uh, very important apart from that colleges can also what colleges can also do is uh, all these different uh, ho- hobby groups or societies student societies that exist as the ruta point pointed out so the official ones uh, at least in the tier one colleges i know do receive funding uh, from uh, from the colleges so uh, these colleges should also uh, try and make these lgbtq support groups as an official group uh, recognized by the college so that funds can also be channelized to these groups and they can then work towards making the campus more inclusive and and there are different ways in which you can ma- make campus more inclusive it can be through graffiti it, it can be through regular pamphlets uh, in the uh, hostel notice board or uh, college notice boards it can be by collaborating with different societies so you have film societies photography societies you can showcase or uh, with screen regularly uh, in these uh, colleges uh, at least in taiwan i know Uh, uh these uh, movies so as part of that uh, you can have say a pride celebration where you screen lgbtq movies or movies around lgbtq topics to sensitize people so these are different ways in which uh, institutes can in fact help lgbtq students and apart from like uh, uh, ha- uh, as amrita pointed out having sensitization probably sen- uh, sensitization courses or sessions for for their own faculty and so i think these uh, these are some of the steps that institutes can take uh, and this which will in fact go a long way in making the campus more inclusive and friendly yeah thank you subdeep a big hi to amrita's cat hello thank you for joining us we are very very proud and happy to see you coming back to the panel i think it's been um, great because especially when you talk about consciousness building and collectivization and institution supporting these activities what i'm also interested to think about is the whole idea of intersectionality and maybe the intersectionality can actually enable us to forming larger and more holistic communities so if you think about i mean we are queer but we are also some of us are queer and dalit some of us are queer and disabled some of us are queer dalit and disabled and i think when we are at the margins it's really important for all of us who are at the margins to come together and form spaces of solidarity where we can really support each other in these institutions so thank you for sharing that so if i may restart the discussion uh, thinking about we need to really think about now what about policy level implementation that's what we want to talk about and um, before i reach out to both the panelists i think what's uh, what i would like to quickly say is that 
over the last one year itself. So in 2020, we had two policies that have come out in the public, right? So one is the National Education Policy 2020 and the Draft Science Technology Innovation Policy 2020. Um, and both the policies claim to be inclusive of queer trans people and they are, they are interested in making uh, spaces, uh, STEM spaces and education spaces, higher education spaces accessible and hospitable to queer trans individuals. The NEP 2020 specifically talks about um, transgender individuals, for example, being a socially marginalized group, so on and so forth. But what strikes me as odd in both these policies is that at least to the best of my reading, I don't find any tangible action point, right? So an institution should do this to make itself accessible and hospitable to queer trans individuals. So. If we talk at the level of policy, then um, Amrita and Subhi, what do you think a policy that claims to be accessible and um, to, be to, make, to be making a space hospitable and affordable for queer trans individuals, what do you think that policy should be focusing on? So Subhi, may I request you to start this discussion off and then I'll come to you Amrita. Yeah, I think as a policy, uh, if we're talking about policy, uh, it should focus on making this institute like uh, institutionalized uh, some of these uh, things that can make the institute safe space. So uh, I'll speak from my experience uh, when I moved to uh, uh, ISM, when I was studying in ISM. So I think there was a policy shift in terms of making spaces, government spaces, more accessible for disabled individuals. So, uh, so all the existing, uh, all the new bu buildings were uh, were more disabled friendly. They had ramps, and the existing ones were made. Uh, they had ramps installed uh, uh, in part of the stairs. Uh, had ramp, uh, ramps that had been installed. So that is one example of how uh, uh, like policies can change colleges. So in a similar way, uh, if we are talking about policy changes, I think uh, what uh, should should be incorporated is not just in colleges, but in fact, this should happen from from the school level in terms of having gender sensitive trainings and courses. So in uh, in engineering co colleges, we do have uh, one or two semesters where we have English uh, or communication skills and uh, other such courses. Uh, similarly, there should be a course uh, and, and, and a mandatory course on gender sensi sensitization, which should also, which should not only sensitize uh, students uh, about uh, in general, uh, on uh, about gender issues, but also about LGBTQ issues and how to basically that uh, and uh, not just LGBTQ issues, but sexuality as well in general, because many, uh, many young people suffer uh, with, with because of lack of uh, sexual uh, understanding of their sexuality. So uh, and if we can have these things, I think, and, and also mandatory, I mean, uh, what, uh, what policies can also do is mandatorily have like we have been and other things mandatorily have a call a, a professor or a counselor assigned who will also act as like a lgbtq friendly counselor or or guide or something like that so i think these are some of the key points that should be incorporated thank you thanks a lot subdeep amrita may i request you to share your views yeah um so for me when we talk about policy I want to see someone being held accountable. So for me, policy is all about like accountability. How we are, how we are going to measure these changes that are coming out due to this policy. So I think a policy personally should include members because quantifying this progress is what these institutions need. Like we could see that happening everywhere around the world and in India for the past 70 years, more than that since we got independence. Like representing minorities with members and making sure that certain minority is being represented in an institution is really important. So this policy needs to have quantifiable results and institutions should be able to show these quantifiable results as progress. So that, that way they're being held accountable it's because everyone can say that, oh, we have a student club for minorities or like we have student club for LGBTQ people, but what are the results of having a club like that? Uh, people are becoming more sensitized and people are becoming more inclusive. So we need to measure that in order to hold these institutions accountable. So I think this policy needs, what it needs is a numbers, quantifiable results and holding these institutions accountable. 
thank you thanks to both of you i'll just i mean i agree with whatever you've said i'm just going to quickly add some points from my side because i've been looking at some of these policies for some time and i think what we need is a a very strong sexual harassment policy that takes into account specific problems that are faced by queer and trans individuals so although we have a fairly watertight prevention of sexual harassment at workplace act the vishakha guidelines we have um the ugc guidelines on and so forth i think um, in education spaces it's really important that we look at those guidelines and think about whether these um institutional committees so internal complaints committees or so icc's or gscas which is gender sensitized cell against sexual harassment are these cells and committees um trained enough um capable enough of handling particular cases of sexual harassment that are brought to them by queer and trans individuals we need to have gender neutral spaces more and more in our educational spaces so we need gender neutral hospitals gender neutral washrooms and as many gender neutral spaces as possible and like you know all of you pointed out about sensitization mandatory sensitization accountability and equal opportunity cells so thank you thank you so much for pointing those out so be i may i think yeah, yeah. please yeah. i think one point i missed out is that it's also very important to have uh, uh, like the anti ragging uh, policies to incorporate specifically that lgbt uh, uh, harassment lgbtq harassment or bullying should also be specifically mentioned in those uh, anti ragging policies absolutely absolutely i completely agree and that really brings me to another interesting point that i've been thinking about which is mental health right so most um, indian institutions these days have an on campus counselor and non campus psychologist or some mental health care professional who's able to extend a certain amount of help to students but uh, most of these mental health care practitioners are not queer affirmative um, or trained to handle mental health problems that might be specific to somebody's queer identity uh, queer and trans identity so um, i think what we also need to do is think about these mental health care systems in education institutions and think about how we can um, actually revamp them to have more and more queer affirmative psychologists and mental health practitioners who can um, you know also handle um, and really support it's not about just handling mental health crises but supporting queer and trans people who might be coming to them for help so with that i think we come to a conclusion of what i think is was a fantastic panel discussion where we've spoken and heard and learned so much about our experiences of being in stem but also about how we are looking at the future and uh, since we are some of the people who on whose shoulders um, the rest of the future of our you know future generations of queer people stand so i'm really happy that we've been able to come together and have this discussion and i really hope that um, future generation of queer people people who are still pursuing their education or planning to pursue an education in stem institutions who have been who will be listening uh, who are listening to the panel are able to take into account some of these points because the next responsibility i think it's time for us to pass this baton on and also basically make more and more batons we continue doing the work we've been doing and really hopefully incorporate more and more people in this journey so great thanks to subdeep amrita amrita skat for giving us a guest appearance and the tried circle team for uh, providing us the opportunity to come together and discuss on the issue thank you have a good day ahead yeah thank you uh, thank you sir anton for the wonderful uh, panel as well as pride circle for enabling us to share our experiences